Life and Death A sculpture by the English artist Rich Bloke Sculpted in 1978 This piece depicts the close relationship between life and death and how it coexists in one form intermingled and entwined confused at its own boundaries The form displays bone and empty sockets and voids where organs, arteries and living matter may have fitted. But as a whole, it displays upright living vigour of a proud and wild mammal with its living dignity in place. The antler-like spirals towering up show how the most dominant feature of a living creature can in fact be dead matter antlers, claws, hair and teeth. As we view this piece from different angles, it takes on new life. It almost appears like a different object, although we're looking at the same one. It breathes its own life. Standing upright on its stand, it is bold and dominant, but laying down can almost depict a dead body. But then viewed from a slightly different angle, a resting, a resting body that is still much alive. Life and death, entwined as one, with neither being more dominant than the other. The artist has chosen ash timber as a material. A material that was once fine and living, but now lives on as dead matter in the form of this sculpture. This piece helps us to understand the words of Augustus Mackintosh when he wrote, Life is immortally relentless as death is relentlessly mortal. As you browse this object, it appears to continually change, showing you different things. Yes, there's the life, the strong movement that is within the object, and there is the death, the dead, bone, hollow, still sections, but you can move around it, you can zoom in and out and change the way that it plays upon your mind. Hi, I just wonder if uh, any of you were taken in by uh, that complete load of twaddle that you've just watched. Um, in fact, yes, it's a real sculpture, really was done by a rich bloke, who's me, uh, when I was at school when I was 15. Um, never had anything to do with life and death or any of that stuff that you've just heard about. But I've been thinking recently, uh, what, what is art um, and who decides? I know this question's come up a lot and uh, you can see it all over YouTube um, but I do wonder whether we can be persuaded to think that uh, certain things are what they are. Um, yeah, it's a sculpture but it was pretty much done as I went along. I think uh, I thought, oh that would be good if I cut that bit out, uh, do a hole through that way, hole through that way and it will start to probably make quite a nice interesting shape. A lot easier than actually uh, 
trying to make something look realistic. You know, if I was doing a swan or something, uh, uh, it was going to be a lot more difficult than this sort of uh, abstract sort of uh, object. But having said that, it's great. I love it. It is a nice thing. Um, but uh, as far as all that meaning and that, I just put that in as a, as a kind of um, experiment, really, um, just to see if anybody was taken in by it all. Um, even uh, the words of, <coughs> what was his name? Augustus Macintosh. <laughs> Never heard of him, just made him up. And the thing about life is immortally relentless and death is relentlessly mortal. Complete load of twaddle. But sometimes people tend to want to put things in like that uh, to, to make things sound more authentic, uh, to give them more meaning. And I think some of us are taken in by that kind of thing. And I've been thinking recently um, about um, what makes real art. Is it, is it what it is? Or is it how people try and make us believe, how people try to try and make us see things in things that perhaps aren't really there? But I'm sure we've all got our own thoughts on this. But what I'd like um, is I'd like you to uh, perhaps leave me a message and uh, let me know what you think. What's your theory on what is and isn't art? Um, it's difficult because when you start to talk about it, even when you're making it up, you do actually start to sound like um, an art critic yourself. Um, and also, I did find uh, going through the process that I was almost convincing myself that this object really did have real meaning. Um, and I wonder how much art is fake. Not fake as in copied from someone else, but fake as in just doing it for its own sake at the time and then applying a meaning to it afterwards. Let me know your thoughts.